jailbreak tutorial. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to fully set up the new 12.02 PS4 jailbreak using a Blu-ray disc because we can now jailbreak using a new exploit that uses a Blu-ray disc to jailbreak the PS4. So in order to do this, you will need to get yourself a Blu-ray disc, either a BD-R or BD-RE disc. Now it does need to be a Blu-ray disc and not a DVD or CD, it has to be Blu-ray, which means you also need a Blu-ray writer on your computer. You can get external writers that connect to your computer with a USB connection that you can then use to write the exploit to the disc. And of course, if you cannot get a Blu-ray drive, there are people who are already selling discs that have the exploit already written to it on places like eBay. So you could just buy one of those so that you don't have to write the disc yourself. This will be a full tutorial showing you how to set up the jailbreak from scratch. And of course, this video is also part of a playlist of tutorials showing you how to take full advantage of your jailbroken PS4 that you can go and check out after you've got the jailbreak set up with this video to see what else you can do with your jailbroken PS4. Before we get started, we need to set up a few things on the console. So if we head over to our notifications and go to our downloads section, just make sure you don't have any system software versions being downloaded or that are waiting to be installed. If you do, press the options button on it and make sure you delete that system update so it does not install. Then we're gonna head over to our settings menu, scroll down to the network settings and uncheck the box to connect to the internet. We're just doing this temporarily just now. And then we're also gonna go down to the system option here and go to automatic downloads. You wanna make sure that none of these boxes are ticked for automatic downloads which will also help prevent you from accidentally installing any system software updates. So next, we're going to head back and go to the system information page here and check your firmware version. So you can see my system software version is 12.02. So you can run this jailbreak with the Blu-ray disc from firmwares 9.00 all the way up to 12.02 and any firmware version in between. I would personally only recommend using this jailbreak though on firmwares from 10.00 up to 12.02 and that's because obviously higher firmwares than 12.02, the jailbreak is patched, so you cannot run it on 12.50 or higher. And also any firmwares lower than 10.00 have older jailbreaks that you can run through the web browser that do not require a Blu-ray disc, which are generally easier to set up and use. So first we need to download the Blu-ray exploit itself here. We just want to download the laps.iso. I'll leave a link to this down in the video description, so you can go ahead and download it there. We also want to download the Gold Hen payload, Gold Hen version 2.4 B18.5 or higher. So I'll leave a link to this as well. You're not required to donate. You can enter zero and it will still give you the download link if you just want to get the download. So you want to download that as well. And I highly recommend installing the Homebrew store, which you can just go to pkg-zone.com, which will be linked in the description and go to HB store and download for PlayStation 4 and that will download the homebrew store to your computer. So as you can see, I've got them copied over here. We've got the laps.iso, gold hen, and we've got the homebrew store package file. I've also got a game Minecraft as a fake package, just as a demonstration, because fake package versions of games are basically decrypted games that normally will not run on a retail console, but can be loaded with a jailbroken console. So if we can get this game to run, we do have our console jailbroken. So that is the general idea. Obviously, I won't leave a link to that for obvious reasons. So what we're going to do here is just go ahead and copy the necessary files to the USB drive. So you need to grab yourself a USB drive, plug it into your computer, right click on it and go to properties and just ensure that the file system is either XFAT or FAT32. If it isn't, make sure you right click and reformat it in XFAT or FAT32 format here and click start to reformat the drive. Obviously, back up anything on the drive before reformatting it. So if we go into this USB drive here, we can open up the Gold Hen zip file or 7-zip file. You need 7-zip or WinRAR to open this. I'll leave a link to that in the description as well, along with everything else you need. And you just want to take this goldhen.bin file and copy it to the root of the USB drive. And then we want to rename this file from goldhen.bin to payload.bin. So it's just called payload.bin. Make sure you go to view, show, and show file name extensions. Make sure that is ticked so that you can confirm that the file name is correct, payload.bin. So once you've done that, you can also grab any package files you want to install and copy those also to the root of the USB drive. So our homebrew store and Minecraft package, I'll copy those over there. And I can now eject that USB drive and plug it into the PS4. 
Now, lastly, we need to obviously get the Blu-ray set up with the exploit. So all you need to do is burn this ISO file to your Blu-ray disc using a software like ImageBurn. So with ImageBurn, we can open up the software here and select the option to write the image file to the disc. And then you can just drag and drop the ISO file into that application. Or you can click the little folder icon with the magnifying glass to browse for it manually. And then simply insert a blank Blu-ray disc, either a BDR disc or BD-RE disc. Now before you go to write the disc, there is a write speed option in the bottom right hand corner here. So by default, it typically just burns at the max supported speed. But I would recommend setting this to whatever your disc recommends. So, you know, on the box of your disc or on the disc itself, it usually has a recommended write speed. So just set it to that. And if you still get disk errors or you get some kind of error when trying to run the disk on the PS4, then maybe try burning the next disk at the lowest supported write speed, which is normally something like 2x. So I would personally recommend that if you are running into issues and also make sure you have the verify option enabled so that when you burn the disk, it will verify to make sure it has been written successfully. And then you can select the option to write the image to the disk. Once that's done, it will only take about a minute to write the ISO file to the disk because it is so small. So once it's finished, you can go ahead and eject the disk and simply insert it into your PS4. So if we switch back to the PS4 here with our USB drive inserted and our Blu-ray disc inserted, you can see we have it available here. So when you first attempt to load a Blu-ray disc on your PS4, it might give you an error message like this saying that you have to connect to the internet to enable Blu-ray playback. I believe this might be something to do with uh, activating certain codecs. So unfortunately, you do need to connect to the internet at least temporarily just to actually enable this feature but you can always disable your network connection again afterwards as soon as it's enabled the Blu-ray playback. Also, don't forget that we have our automatic downloads disabled, which will help prevent system updates from being automatically installed onto the console when we reconnect to the internet. So if you get this message, just reconnect back up to your network real quick and then load the Blu-ray disc. You may also get this message about allowing the Blu-ray disc to connect to the internet. Just say yes to allow it. It's not gonna cause any issues and then it should run the jailbreak right here. So there we go, it is now running. And what this has done is it's not only just loaded the jailbreak, which is our Gold 10 payload, but it has also copied it from the USB drive to the internal hard drive, to the data folder on the hard drive, which means the next time you want to run this, you will not need the USB drive plugged in with that payload.bin on there anymore. You only need it the first time you're launching it because now it will then launch it from the hard drive instead. So it's only required the first time you launch it or if you're updating the payload. But that is it. So if it loaded successfully and you got the message Gold Hen running there, then you are all good. Now, it might not work successfully the first time. It might just give you a message saying that you need to restart your PS4 or it might crash your PS4, which isn't a problem. Just restart the console, boot it back up and then try and run it again until it eventually works. It is pretty stable, so most likely it will work first time. But if not, you can just go ahead and give it another try. So once it's loaded successfully, it might close the disc player automatically for you. If not, just go ahead and press the PS button. Just wait for it to regain a signal and then we can press the options button and close the application. And congratulations, you've now essentially got your PS4 jailbroken. Now, one thing I should also mention, if it's not allowing you to run the Blu-ray disc because it says that HDCP is currently disabled, head down into your system settings and just make sure enable HDCP is ticked. Otherwise, it will not allow you to launch the Blu-ray disc. So that option needs to be enabled. Okay, so now that we have the jailbreak running, if we head into our settings, we can reconnect to the internet by going to the network settings and connect to the internet. So this will get us connected back up to the internet. And because we've loaded Gold Hen once, it will now block system updates from being downloaded onto the console. Even when you restart the PS4 and you're not running Gold Hen anymore, it will still be blocked. So that is safe to reconnect to the internet now because if I try to go to system software update to get the latest system update, you can see it tries to download version 12.52 online, but then it immediately says it cannot download because the updates are being blocked. So it's perfectly safe to reconnect to the internet now that we have Gold Hen loaded. So the next thing we can do is install the homebrew applications that we put on the USB drive. If I head into the Gold Hen settings and go to the debug settings package installer, we can see the applications that we put on the USB drive and we can select install all. 
and click OK to accept the installation. And that is how you sideload applications onto a jailbroken PS4. So we get Minecraft installed just as a test. And then of course the homebrew store. So if I try and run Minecraft, it should load without any issues because we're running Gold Hen. So there we go, it is loaded and that is working just fine. And then also we'll run the homebrew store so we can download other homebrew applications. So just click OK to all of the messages that pop up when you first launch this and then head down to the store groups section. And then from there we can go to the utility section and then we want to select the option to download the PS4 Cheats Manager. So we'll select that option and download and install. And that will download the PS4 Cheats Manager onto the console. So this is how you install other homebrew applications onto your PS4. And I do have a, another tutorial in the series that shows you the most useful homebrew applications to install on your PS4. Okay, so before we go any further, it's important to note that there's currently an issue with this jailbreak that can cause black screen issues when launching some of your games and also save data corruption. So save files can get corrupted. Now, luckily there is a fix for this with a gold hen plugin that we need to enable in order to fix these issues. So before we go any further, we should absolutely get this installed first. So plug your USB drive back into your computer and I'll leave a download to this plugins.zip file in the video description. Once you have this downloaded, we're going to extract the contents to the root of your USB drive and then simply plug that USB drive back into your PlayStation 4. Next, we're going to go back to the homebrew store and download the PS4 Explorer 2.0 application. If you're keeping your PS4 offline, remember that you can always download any of these homebrew applications on the computer itself at pkg-zone.com and then simply install them from a USB drive with the package installer in the same way as we did with the homebrew store and Minecraft. Now, once it's downloaded, we can press the options button to close the homebrew store and launch PS4 Explorer. Select the root access option, and then press left and right on your D-pad to switch to your USB drive. Scroll down with the D-pad and press R1 over both plugin files, and then simply press triangle and select the copy option. Then press circle twice to get back to the root directory and then go into the data folder on the hard drive and then the gold hen folder. Press triangle and paste the files here. Finally, we're going to select the zip file with X and it should show us all of the files inside the zip and we can just press square to extract those files. Now you can close out of the PS4 Explorer and you just need to make sure that the plugins loader is enabled in the gold hen plugin settings and with that enabled you now have the black screen and save issues fixed now hopefully this will not be needed in the future but for now this is a temporary fix that we can use to fix those problems we can now launch this application and this application we use to download the latest cheats patches and plugins for gold hen to get it running at its full potential so we're going to go ahead and select the update option here and then we'll go down and select the option to update cheats, patches and plugins from the internet and select X on that. And then we will update the cheats from GitHub and that will download the latest cheat files and get them all installed. So over 3000 cheats installed. Then we'll do the patches and there should be over 300 patches there. And then also the plugins and that'll be about 11 plugins installed as well. So there we go, that's everything installed. In order to actually apply a patch to one of your games, we can just head into the patches section. And then if I press triangle, it will filter for games I have installed. Of course, I have Bloodborne installed version 1.09. So if I go into that section, I can enable certain patches for the game like 60 FPS and of course the 720p patch so it can hit higher frame rates and then also skip intros which will get me into the game faster so I can enable those patches. And once I have the patches enabled, I can go ahead and close out of the application. So from here, if we head into the gold hen settings, we've got our debug settings, which we normally use just for the package installer, but it can also enable the full debug settings from in here as well. And then also we've got our cheat settings. I like to show title ID labels for title ID and app version which just shows the game ID and game version that's installed underneath all of your applications, which is pretty handy. It can slow down the menu of the PS4 if you have too many applications installed. So just bear that in mind. You can also update the cheat archive from in here too to download the latest cheats, just to get the cheats updated faster. 
And then also you've got the plugin settings where you can enable the plugins loader. So I recommend enabling that and also enabling the game patch plugin, which is now available since we installed the latest patches. So once we've done that, we can head over to the game overlay. You can also enable an FPS counter for your games. You can also display certain information as well, like RAM usage, CPU usage, and more. I normally leave that off. And then you can also enable scan lines for your retro games as well. That's another option. Then we have the server settings. So I like to enable the FTP server so that I can remotely access my PS4 over the network to access the file system. Definitely handy. And also the bin loader server, which will allow us to send payloads remotely to execute on the console. That's another handy one to have enabled. And then we've got the K-Log settings, which I normally leave off. Uh, not really necessary unless you're a developer. And then we have the normal settings where we can just leave this as is. You can also update your date and time from in here as well. If you have your date and time unsynced, you can update from within there. So those are all of your goal 10 options. Okay, so just to show all of the changes that I've applied and what they all do, if I launch my game Bloodborne that we applied the patches for, we get our FPS counter showing up from our overlays and we also get the patches applied, three patches applied, 157 patch lines. And then there we go, we are up and running. It skips the intros and gets us straight into the game. We have the 60 FPS patch applied from Lance McDonald because of course, famously, Bloodborne only runs at 30 FPS, whereas you can unlock 60 FPS with a jailbroken PS4 if you lower the resolution. So here we go, I've loaded up into the game here and I can also enable certain cheats for my game too. So not only are we running at uh, 60 FPS here, but I can also go ahead and hold down the share button and then all of the cheats we installed will appear for your games. So I can enable the master code, infinite blood echoes, infinite health, one hit kill, and I can enable all of those and press circle to go back into the game. And all of those cheats are now applied. Okay, so I found an enemy and I'm just taking a few hits to show that infinite health is working. We're not losing any health. And I can also kill the enemies in one hit. So there we go. You can see we've got our 60 FPS. We've got our cheats that you can enable for your games. And of course, there are patches for hundreds of games and thousands of cheats available for different PS4 games that you can apply. So that is just an example of what you can do with your jailbroken PS4 when you have the jailbreak set up fully. So last but not least, it's important to mention that this is a tethered jailbreak, which means when we restart our PS4, the jailbreak will no longer be running. Now, what this means is that you'll still have everything installed from when you were jailbroken. So any applications you've installed, homebrew applications or games, all of that stuff will still be installed. Any cheats, patches, plugins, that will all still be there. The only thing is when you restart the console, Goal 10 will no longer be running, which means when we boot back into the homepage, none of the applications are runnable. They all have a padlock symbol. And if I try and run them, you'll see it will say that we cannot use this content. So cannot access the content. So it is not runnable. So all you need to do is put in your Blu-ray disc again and run it. And then that will get the jailbreak up and running with Gold 10. Once Gold 10 is loaded, you'll see that I'll then be able to load Minecraft again here. And this time it works. So all you have to do is rerun the jailbreak, which takes a few seconds with the Blu-ray disc and you're back up and running with the jailbreak. So that is one of the downsides is having to reload the jailbreak whenever you restart your PS4. Now, one of the workarounds for this is to use rest mode instead of turning the console off. So inside the Gold 10 settings, we have the option to enable rest mode support. With that option enabled, whenever you put the console into rest mode and then recover from rest mode, the jailbreak will still be running. Gold 10 will still be available just as you left it. So you don't have to reload Gold 10 when you recover from rest mode. So instead of turning the console off and back on again, just put it into rest mode and recover from rest mode instead. That is one workaround. But you will have to restart your PS4 at some point and it only takes a few seconds really to get up and running again with Gold 10 by loading up the Blu-ray disc. So of course I do encourage you guys to check out the playlist linked below in the description. There's many more tutorials showing you how to take full advantage of your jailbroken PS4 like what handy homebrew applications to install, as well as running PS4, PS2, and PS1 games on your PS4 as well, running Linux so that you can run PC games and some emulators on your PS4, and getting remote play running and various other features. 
that you can get up and running on your jailbroken PS4. So yeah, definitely check out the playlist link down in the video description and at the end of the video here. So that'll do it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe.